Atlanta now where Brandon Godden and Charles Davis are on the call. Larry, in what is scheduled to be its final season as an NFL stadium, there's a look at the Georgia Dome here in Atlanta. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons. They come up in an offset hey, eye. Now the first carry for Doug Martin. And he's not going anywhere to start the night. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. Adrian Claiborne, the one who makes the stop. Here's the offense and highlighted as a guy who gave himself his own nickname, the Dugginator. Brandon, you really can't nickname yourself. But if he keeps running at this level, they will have plenty of good nicknames to choose from. Jameis to throw it. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. It's not always as trade as that team wanted it more than the other, but on that play, it actually was true. They were faster to the ball. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push him back more. Second down, Winston. Goes underneath to Martin. It'll be a gain of four. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Okay, Charles, defensive starter time for the Atlanta Falcons. And let's spotlight Keanu Neal, the safety out of Florida. So big, so athletic. Many thought they might make him an outside linebacker, but I think they're going to use him as a hybrid outside linebacker, strong safety, Ready, kind of in the Cam Chancellor mode in Seattle. Winston now, deep drop, and he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. And that was a heck of a shot right there by Jameis Winston. Boy, he has a superior right arm, doesn't he? You saw him play baseball. Yeah, he's actually a switch hitter in baseball. Outfielder and then, of course, a very hard-throwing pitcher. That's translated well in the National Football League. That it has. When he has to make that throw on a line, he's got plenty of arm to do it. Now a play fake to Martin. Here's Winston. And Winston lost the football. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. Third and long for Winston. It's caught by Mike Evans. In week 12, Evans hit 1,000 yards, second to do that this year, Julio Jones the first. But now the fourth player in NFL history is Mike Evans with 1,000 or more receiving yards in each of his first three seasons. How about the names? Randy Moss, Randy Moss A.J. Green, yep. John Jefferson. And to arrive in that company, eight catches, 104 yards, two touchdowns, by the way, as well in week 12. A first down throw for Winston. To Shepard, complete over the middle. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. On second down, Martin. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Doug Martin, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Bucs take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. Roberto Aguayo now for the point after. And his kick is no good. An inauspicious start here kicking-wise as this one stays a 6-0 game.
after the touchdown. Aguayo now ready for the kickoff. It's a short kick, taken at the 15. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. One receiver left, two to the right. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And incomplete to open things up. He was hoping to get that one to Tevin Coleman in space. And now it's second down. A glance at the starting unit, Julio Jones, a threat on the outside, of course. Combines great athleticism, incredible speed, and a whole lot of toughness to be one of the better receivers in the NFL. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. Touchdown, Falcons. Julio Jones, 66 yards. And the Falcons are an extra point away from moving out in front. And he'll bang that one through. After the touchdown, it's Bosher to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. It's a pickup of 21, and it'll give the Bucks a first down. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision, and receivers love them as well because they're getting the yardage. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Bucks in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. And they've got it here with a first down. They go play action here on first down. Looking deep downfield. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. Jameis to throw it. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Josh Huff, the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. On third down, Winston. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Ah. 
shreds the tackle. A very nice job on the run back there. He'll get 23 yards all told. And here come the Falcons again on offense who set a game up on Tampa Bay through 12 weeks in the NFC South. And one guy who helped get them there that maybe many people didn't see doing that, Taylor Gabriel. He's turned out to be a big part of this offense, hasn't he? He has, and it's so unfortunate for the Cleveland Browns as they try to improve their team and are struggling through a very difficult 2016 that they let this guy go. And in Atlanta, he's turned into a little bit of a, a cult star, hasn't he? A <laughs> couple of touchdowns this past Sunday. He's really become a great player. And the Falcons, they even tweeted out thanks to the Browns. Here's Ryan. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> a big play there on the catch and run. And even 40 yards. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody who has that ability, they want them on their team. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Tacklers made by Clinton McDonald. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. On second down, here's Ryan. And it's complete to Jacob Tammy. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Jacob Tammy, 35 yards. And the Falcons will extend their lead. Remember the one-dimensional tight ends who just put their hand in the ground and block people? Well, if you're that guy now, you're probably a fullback in an I-formation offense. These tight ends nowadays can do everything. Block, run, and catch. Beautiful connection for a touchdown. Now after the touchdown, it's Bosher to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. Ready, On first and 10, Winston. He's going to wind up and air it out. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. And they're definitely showing blitz here. On second down, Winston again. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Doug Martin, and now it's third down. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Winston from the gun on third down. He's got Evans. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. But Mike Evans sees man coverage. I don't think he's the only guy who gets excited. I'll guarantee the guy throwing the ball does because guess what? He's got a lot of options about where to place it because of Mike Evans' size and frame. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First out, here's the run with Martin. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, holding them to one yard on a first down run. 
It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. And here comes play number six on this drive. You gotta give some credit. They're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and get some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And now it's fourth down. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, the hit pass defense is going to be excellent. You're dropping eight. Where are you going to go with the football? Winston to throw for it on four. Flushed out right. And a catch right side by Evans. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. Well, the field goal attempt was well in hand. They had that, but they decided to go for it anyway. Extreme confidence, it looks like. Yeah, but I bet the defense is going to remember this one, right? They kind of rubbed their nose in it. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. Ready. They'll run it now out of the gun. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. Really good, solid run right there, and they did it from the four. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bucks are within a two-point conversion of tying us up. And this time he gets it to go as it is up and good. After the touchdown, Aguayo now ready for the kickoff. That'll be taken in the end zone. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light ready, means go, ready. red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. Now a play fake here on first down. The left side completion to Jones. A good pick up there, 22. And with that, it's two-minute warning time here. The NFL on EA Sports. One receiver left, two to the right. Here's Ryan out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll be a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Trying to set up the screen, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Alteron Werner, and his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the Ready. last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now they're confident. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being Ready. shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. First down, Winston. And he fires one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. Ready, 
I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Back to the ground, this time with Freeman. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. And Devontae Freeman just outside of the top 10 in rushing yardage, 729 on the season. And he had two more touchdowns in Week 12. Really a nice year for him. He's made a lot of people revise their scouting report on him because, Brandon, you saw him in college as well. He was one of those guys that was so good at so many different things. I think a lot of people started to call me jack of all trades, maybe master of none, and we were underrating him. He is a terrific player because he does it all. Runs, catches, blocks, plays so hard. But we got to give him his credit and give him his due. He's a heck of a player. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. He's got a man complete. Julio Jones all alone. Touchdown, Falcons. Julio Jones in the final seconds of the first half. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. And with that, the lead is up to eight. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. They go back to the air here after the INT. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they dropped. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with a pressure to play. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. So out come the Falcons now. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Now Ryan on second down. On the screen, this is Coleman. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. The 20. <laughs> Touchdown, Falcons. Kevin Coleman, 78 yards, and the Falcons will extend their lead. Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it, and we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. Well, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. A look at the offense now here, coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. 
try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And they're going to speed things up here. What terrifies defense is when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. It looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Winston from the gun on third down. He's got Evans. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. And now they're in the hurry up. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Winston now from the 50. They set up the screen to Martin. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. A good pick up there, 26 yards. That was a beautifully executed screen pass. Let the rushers get upfield. The blocking forms in front. Lofted it to the runner. And now, not only does he have open space in front of him, he's got an escort as well, and they pick up big yardage. Winston gives to the tailback, Martin. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. Grady Jarrett with the tackle. The best defensive lineman. They play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. So this is a great example of a really good run stop. He rifles one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you score once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. On second down, Ryan. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. So second and 10 here. Here's a former 1,000-yard rusher at Steven Ridley. And he'll get this up to about the 40. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. And no move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. Partner, that defensive win reminds me of something a coach of mine used to say all the time. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Brad McDougal. And the return across midfield and to the 46-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. 13 yards there on the pickup, and the Buccaneers are going to have a first down. 
One receiver left, three to the right. On first and ten, Winston. Escaping the pressure right. On the run, he'll let that. He's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Josh Huff, 32 yards. And the interception by the Bucks D leads to a touchdown. So they're going to go for two. Winston to throw for it. And they don't get it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. Should have been picked. Probably doesn't matter on a two-point conversion, but still, as a former DB, you want to grab that ball when you can, don't you? You certainly do, and, and don't say it, because I know you're thinking it. Don't say it. <laughs> what am I thinking? You know what I'm, I know what you're thinking. Well, if he'd had hands, he'd be playing on offense, right? Oh, that's true. You've said that before. Yeah, here now come the Falcons. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. They'll run it now out of the gun. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. And quickly, they get to the line. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. the lead as we get set to start the fourth. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. On first down, Ryan. It's caught, left side, Tammy. So a loss of five and it'll be second down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Well, where do you find that one in the playbook, Charles? You don't. You absolutely don't. And sometimes what happens is guys want to make a big play, and they turn it into a really bad one. Sometimes you're best just to cut your losses and go down. I hope we don't see another play like that. I'll guarantee you the offensive coordinator, he's going to get his play sheet. He can't find it either. Yeah, big loss there on the pass completion. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. And the offense moving quickly to the line. This is Freeman on first and 10. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Oh, there's no doubt that this is a huge defensive series right here. They've got to hold him to a field goal attempt or less. Otherwise, this game just might be out of reach. Let's see if they can hunker down and get it done. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. They're going to hurry back to the line now. First down and goal to go from the seven. They run. Devontae Freeman. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. 
<laughs> Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. So big play on third and goal. Defensively, they're going with a dime look. Want to cover off. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Kevin Coleman, his second touchdown of the night, and the Falcons will add on to their lead. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call, they already had it lined up, never even got to it. Now after the touchdown, it's Bosher to kick it away. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. <laughs> I love it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. Oh, the rookie nearly had the pick. Probably should have had it. Third down now. He's got to be kicking himself right there. His team's already picked off two passes. That would have been the third in the game. And boy, they've really played well attacking the football. On third down, Winston. He's going to look deep down the field. And, oh, Jameis intercepted a third time. Ricardo Allen with a pick. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big. There he goes, left side. Touchdown, Falcons. Kevin Coleman, 46 yards. And the Falcons turn that interception into a touchdown. Well, a lot of things have to go right. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. Now after the touchdown, it's Bosher to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. Ready, blue lady. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And a catch right side by Evans. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception picked off by Jalen Collins. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. Freeman, the lone man in the backfield. After the interception, here's Ryan. The Pro Bowl wideout Julio Jones is intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Well, the great coaches said football is really a simple game. Rush theirs, protect yours. And he's talking about those guys throwing the football. In this situation, the rush won, hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion. To throw is Ryan. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. 
This thing is ugly. Well, this game is definitely over, but we do know some people like to go ahead and continue to add to their score, don't we? Yeah, I, I don't know that they need to add any more right now, though. I'm just starting to think about those dinner plans tonight, my friend. Well, you and I will be thinking about dinner plans, but we also know they're playing people are thinking, how can I get some more scores for my fantasy, for other things? They're trying to figure that part out now. By the way, last weekend we went sushi because that's what you wanted. We're going steak tonight. I'm in. All right. Great job by the kick team there to get the football, but also don't forget about the man that started it, the lonesome kicker himself. I love that you brought him into it because he doesn't get nearly the attention he deserves. Oftentimes, it's only when it's negative. In this case, he created a positive play for his team. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. On the screen, this is Coleman. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. You know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> yeah, that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And they're going to speed things up here. Now Ryan on second down. And he's going to be taken down here. Back across midfield, three yards away from midfield at the 47. And the O-line will have to do a better job protecting here on third down after that sack. So the D-line's going to spread out. Third and long. It's Ryan. And Tammy with it over the middle. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? And now they're in the hurry up. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Coleman. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. The 22 is the line to gain here on third down. We well, you know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Looks like Ryan's going to stay out there. Indeed, they're going to try for this on fourth down. They're going on fourth down. It's Ryan. And this is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Buccaneers defense holds and they get the football back. So out come the Bucs now. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. Don't forget today. <laughs> Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because... You're not going to want that feeling no, again. No, you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. They decide to air it out a little bit on that play, take a shot downfield, but the coverage was really nice. Able to get a hand in and tip it away. And some extras coming up on the line here, reading for the blitz. On third down, Winston. Flush to his right. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. Ready. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Jameis to throw it, eluding the pressure right. And it is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Falcons will take control of the football in great field position. And the Falcons now making their way back out onto the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. 
the practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and shake hands. Yeah. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Well, they've gone backwards so far in this series. Third and 13. Now Ryan. They'll set up the screen for Freeman. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Here's Matt Bosher now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. And how about this, a fake? And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. This is just an exercise in futility. Do you, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't because now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. So after it's over, you're going to go to the film, find out where the game was really lost. But this is not a situation now where you're going to make up for anything. We'll see what they do here. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. One last shot now for Winston. And now here is another interception. And he's got Rome. A great read, and it's picked off. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Falcon defense has a touchdown. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws.